Hello, my name is Allison. I'd like to share with you the most amazing slides. Hello, my name's Joelle Black. These slides have lots of tips that you can really use. It has so many awesome parts. You simply won't believe how much these slides will help your work. You can put down your coffee now and listen as we give you ways to make your project sing. A helpful guide. With lots of slides. It's super fun. Hello. With music and some visuals, we'll show you how it's done. You in? That's great. Let's get this started then. You simply won't, won't believe how much this deck will change, change your life. life. This deck will change your life. life. <laughs> this slide will change your life. Managing projects. Hello. My name is Joe Allen Black. I'm a senior project manager and web strategist at Palantir.net. And I'm here to talk a little bit about how we run projects from start to finish as project managers. Now, really great musicals tell the story of some kind of journey. Sometimes it's a love story, but more often than not, it's a story of overcoming some kind of odds and obstacles to make something really great happen in the end. And if you think about it, is that really what all of our Drupal web projects really are when you think about it? Musicals just have this really, really great way of using song and a little bit of dance to advance the plot. So it only seemed natural that we would want to take a musical to talk about project management, am I right? <laughs> so over the next hour or so, we're here to talk a little bit about different types of communication, give some tips, and a couple of different tools that you can use to better manage your own projects. Now, if you're not a big Broadway fan, don't worry. We'll let you know when it's time to, to sing along. And we promise that in addition to being very, very musical throughout the entire thing, we're also going to be very, very informative. Or at least we hope so. Can you hear us in the back? So, so. All right. <laughs> uh, so we hope that uh, you, you find it to be very, very informative. Now, if you are a Broadway fan, just wait just for two more slides, and I've got something just for you. <laughs> um, throughout the presentation, you're going to see our uh, Twitter handles, Joe Allen Black, Allison Manley, and then our hashtag, PM the Musical. Be our critics. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, um, and give us ways that we can improve. And, and like I said, things that you do like, too. Uh, real quick, before we get too far in, I've got a quick disclaimer for you. Neither of us is a professional singer, so just think of this as, you know, really, really great karaoke. <laughs> and on top of that, so like I said, we had something for the folks that are Broadway fans or fans of musicals. Uh, inside your playbills, you should see a half sheet of paper that's got a series of blank lines on it. Throughout the show, as you hear us do different songs from different musicals, if you're able to fill that out and let us know where the songs come from, bring it on up here at the end, and you'll be entered for a $25 uh, uh, gift card to Think Geek, which is pretty rad, right? Consider the audience. And with that, let's begin. Let's start at the very beginning. I mean, seriously, what song did you think we'd start with? <laughs> <laughs> a very good place to start. When you read, you begin with? A, B, C. When we work, we begin with? Contracting. Contracting. <laughs> the first real step just happens to be? Contracting. Contracting. Don't we all love contracting? <laughs> <laughs> so this is Allison. She's going to be the heroine of our story. Think of her as Julie Andrews in every story that you loved growing up. Except for she doesn't really skip with the guitar or go up, you know, uh, uh, staircases backwards. She talks more about sprint points, velocity, and Jira. But other than that, it's almost kind of sort of the exact same. Uh, so Allison has just been assigned a new project. What is the first phase, the first thing that she needs to worry about in, in, in this project? We totally just sang about it. Contracting. Contracting, yes. Before she does anything else, Allison has to clearly understand the contract. This is the backbone of any project, and this is what's really going to make a project really work. So, we have to be pretty explicit with what we've got in a contract. So let's all together, let's list out the needs of your statement of work. Scope, you must spell out the scope. Cost. Define the payment terms. Dates. You're unavailable. Clear. Clear deliverables list. Clarity. Clarity on exclusions. Signature. Signatures from higher up. Tea, a drink with jam and bread. <laughs> bring us back to no, 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 your scope. <laughs> with any A 
agency or any project, generally you're going to have a contract that, again, is going to be the backbone of what you work on. Your contracts might be structured a little bit differently, and they might have different phrases, but generally, here's some key features that, again, they might have a different word, but key features that you want to make sure, as a project manager, before you do anything else, you clearly understand what these items are. Uh, deliverables are the things that, you know, this is what your site is going to be. What are the things that your client is paying you to do? What are you planning to deliver at the end of your project? We have scope. This is the totality of your project. What is the space you're working in? Is it going to be multiple sites? Is it going to be a single one? Know your scope. Uh, just as important as knowing what's in, it's also knowing what's out. When your contract is drafted, there's a good number of things that might have been excluded for whatever reason, cost, time, resources. Uh, something might have been excluded. And knowing that up front, as you're building your project plan before you get too much further, it's really important to have a clear idea of what's out just as much as you know what's in. Also important are knowing the assumptions. There was a cost and a price tag probably put on your contract. And some of that was baked with the idea that certain things would be in, certain things would be out. Some things would be easy, some things would be really hard. Having a clear idea of what those are as your assumptions up front from your, your scope of work or from your contract is very, very important. And documenting those things as you move throughout the project. Definitely something that's easy to forget as you get in, so definitely make sure at the beginning of your project you have a really clear idea of what that is. You also want to know the schedule. Somebody somewhere determine the project's going to be 28, six months, a year and a half project, whatever it happens to be. Make sure that you have a clear idea of what that schedule is, so that way you can make sure to deliver at whatever timeline is originally estimated. And we all like to get paid at the end of the day. So make sure you know what those payment terms are. Are you having something where we have to do a series of milestones? Uh, are you on a, a flat fee? Whatever those payment terms happen to be, you want to make sure as a project manager you know what those are. You're aligning those up, and your project plan works accordingly as it's originally approved. We then need to make sure that as project managers, once we know what's in that contract, we're very, very organized. We still haven't brought our team into place yet. We probably haven't made a lot of contact as a project team with our client. So it's really important that we make sure that we get very organized. Think of it as starting a quest. Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the... That's way too many metaphors, so I'll stop that train. But we want to make sure that Allison's able in this project that she was just assigned to create an atmosphere of transparency and collaboration throughout the project. At Palantir, we like to use JIRA. Uh, it's a great system to be able to organize at a very granular level and then also at a higher level so people can see what's going to be delivered and when. We also use Redmine in the past, which is a similar ticketing system. Uh, I've used on projects before Trello, begrudgingly used Basecamp. Um, uh, there's various other ways as project managers we can make sure that everybody has an understanding of what all the work needs to be and how that work is going to be handled. So making sure that you have that tool set up and it's in place for everybody right off the bat is a huge help. I'd also like to immediately start a risk log. So those things that we had as assumptions or things that were exceptions, making sure that that's all documented. If something goes wrong, what's our mitigation strategy? At the beginning of a project, it's a lot easier to figure out, well, if this feature blows up, what are we going to do? Um, so making sure that you have those things documented and it's in a visible way right off the bat is great. You also want to make sure you're tracking your time. Um, and you definitely don't want to bring team members on where it's the first meeting or trying to figure out where to log the time for that meeting. Uh, so making sure to set that time tracking up initially is great. A project manager is going to be a key person for communication. So making sure that we've got tools in place, whether that's Slack, hit chat, you might pick up the phone, I don't know. Uh, whatever those communication paths are, making sure that you've got those documented and making sure that you have a really great way to do that. And then we also like to use lots of Google folders for all of our project artifacts. So six months in, you know exactly, hey, where did that wireframe go? Where were those notes or whatever we're working on? But you want to make sure that that's all in a, in a nice, easy spot and find, you know, many different tools are out there, but Google, Google folders seem to be the trick pretty easily. And they're very, very shareable. Once Allison's gotten her team uh, organized, she wants to make sure that there's really clear communication on what everybody's roles and responsibilities are. Uh, you don't want to get several weeks into the project and everybody's pointing at each other going, hey, who's going to write those JIRA tickets? Uh, figuring that out right off the bat, having a clear idea of what those are, and then making sure that everybody understands that. So a couple key questions that are really great to start a project off with, I found, are asking who's in charge of the overall vision. Sometimes as a project manager, that might be us. It might be a strategist, it might be an executive sponsor. 
Um, but whomever is going to be that driver of the overall vision, having that understanding right off the bat is very key. Uh, and getting back to the user stories, who's going to actually sit down and write those? If it's a year, year and a half long project, that's going to be a lot of user stories. Probably want to budget some time in for that and know who has to do that or which team is going to do that. Um, are we going to be having sprint schedules? And then also, do we have the resourcing in place? Can we make sure that everybody has um, everybody has the amount of time they need to do the work that they expect to do? So getting back to this project, it's an end-to-end -end project that Allison was just assigned. It's a higher ed client. We're going to have a six-member team. And halfway through, we might decide, I don't know, to call it an intermission. Halfway through, we're going to have a little bit of a break. And then we've also got a team member who's going to be on vacation pretty soon. Um, so now that Allison's got all her ducks in a row, she understands her contract, she's prepared for all the work that's to come. <laughs> There's a schedule for feds and designers. I got dashboards set up for my client. My spreadsheets are fly and they're on Google Drive. And I'm told the deposit check finally arrived. <laughs> oh, what an organized project. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling. This project will be OK. <laughs> In case you were wondering, chats are not necessary in every project. <laughs> Whether you want that in your toolkit or not is, is not my call. So once you, you've got your team organized, you have a good idea of what's in your contract, you, you generally want to lead directly into one of your kickoffs. It's the first time that your full project team will be meeting with the, with the client team. You want to make sure that you're taking a, you know, a really good chance to get to know the project, to understand what's going to be a part of it. And our PM's, uh, PM's plate's gonna get pretty full pretty quick in here. Uh, you wanna make sure that in your kickoff you do a couple of key things. You wanna make sure you're defining the goals of your project. Uh, and you wanna make sure that's a shared understanding. Person A might think one thing, person B wants another thing. You need to make sure that the actual project plan has a really clear idea of what it is. And again, making sure that there's consensus. You don't want a whole group of people in a room to walk away from your kickoff meetings with different understandings of what you're gonna deliver at the end. It's not going to set anybody up for success at that point. You want to make sure that you're listening and learning along the way. Uh, your, your clients are going to be the subject matter experts, the people that know their content really well and know what they're trying to achieve. And our goal when they kick off and that first time meeting with them is to really get a key understanding of what that happens to be. You also want to manage your expectations. Uh, there's a couple of things that, that, again, we talked about were excluded, uh, making sure that everybody understands those and any risks that are going on. But at the end of the day, it's about building trust and relationships with your clients. Uh, as a project manager, you want to make sure that you're setting the agenda, or you're helping working with your team to set that agenda. Um, you need to determine which meetings you need, uh, make sure you get the right stakeholders, solidify travel plans. You don't want a designer showing up on Wednesday when the meetings don't start until, I don't know, probably Tuesday before that. Uh, so as a project manager, making sure that all of that happens in a very detailed way. Um, plan different exercises. And, and making sure that everything is clearly understood. These agendas can sometimes get pretty detailed. Um, in the links that we'll give you at the end, uh, we'll give you a download or copy, so you're welcome to, to use our templates if you would like moving forward. Um, but as much as you're really getting into all this agenda planning and, and learning about your client, it's really about getting to know your client. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Sticky note sessions, drawing a lot on whiteboards. <laughs> Getting to know you, writing your thoughts down with markers. Because of all the interesting and new things I'm learning about you day by day. couple different exercises that we're going to do as a part of uh, most of our on-sites. My favorite is empathy mapping, which Allison just sang about. Um, take a sheet of paper, split it up into a couple of different regions. Uh, seeing, saying, feeling, doing. Put yourself in the, the position of any of your personas. 
Uh, so if you're working on a higher ed client, think of potential students that are coming there. What are they seeing when they're going to your site? What are they feeling? Um, again, project managers, we love sticky notes and we love markers. Uh, so working with your clients to put down different thoughts about what that might be. Um, and really gaining an understanding of what your different personas are really early will help make sure that everybody kind of understands what's going on in the project. That's a really good idea when we start prioritizing features or different wording and different phrases. Um, and the, the tool can end up being really, really helpful. Our project manager might also lead an information architecture workshop, uh, which is making sure that we have a clear idea of what the different labels and menus are in our site, how all the content fits together and, and, and interacts together. Um, and it, you know, it does have a little bit of an opportunity to have more sticky notes. We find, though, that also on uh, all of our kickoffs and all of our on-sites, the more we can build collaboration, the, the better off we are. Um, you're able to uh, get a better understanding of what your client's needs are. Um, and the more that you're able to work together, you find that the possibilities really become unlimited. Together we're unlimited. Together we'll be the greatest team there's ever been. Joe cites the way we planned them. If we work in tandem, there's no site we cannot build. Just you and I building this website. Just you and I building this website and getting it to launch. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that one up there for a minute because it makes me happy. <laughs> um, so we started off small at the beginning, talking about you know, very beginnings and getting to know your client. We broke up into a series of big exercises, empathy mapping, architecture workshops. Um, and then it's really important at the end to, to, again, bring it home, make sure that you've got a small set of takeaways that you're able to work through. A couple of different workshops we found are great at the very end. My favorite is the one up here on the right. It's the number one thing the Palantir needs to get right. If you're able to work with stakeholders and you're able to identify that number one thing, document that number one thing, and then keep referring back to it, you can make sure that you have a better launch and really helping to make sure that everybody's all together. A couple of other tools that we find work out really well are asking people to really identify what's in, what's out. Um, we like to make sure that kickoffs and, and those types of meetings definitely uh, spur the idea that uh, really great ideas can come from things. Um, sometimes those might need to be a phase two or phase three or phase, that was a fine yeah. Um, so making sure that we document those as early as we possibly can. And then also most projects come down to, to a couple of key things, quality, scope, budget, and time. We like to make sure quality is not the thing that we ever let slip. But sometimes it's your scope that has to get smaller because of your time or your budget. So talking directly with your client to go, hey, you know what, time, scope, or budget, which of those ones is the, is the key piece. Once you're done with this, this on-site and this kickoff meeting, um, it's really st you're now able to really start kicking into our project. And everything's going to start going smoothly. We've got, we've got our scheduling in place for our, uh, from our getting organized. We know our contract really well. Um, and then we've got that one aforementioned vacation that we talked about for one of our developers. And our PM's going to have to juggle accordingly. You're going to Argentina. <laughs> I'll have to make some adjustments throughout the project. With my persistence, we'll meet our deadlines despite your distance. <laughs> We now move into our strategy and discovery phase. We, we've gotten organized, we have a key idea of what's going on in the project, and now we need to really figure out the best way to make it work. And we generally do that through our strategy and discovery phase. Our PM's job is now shifting a little bit. Uh, we tend to have a strategist who takes much more of the lead in this, in this phase of a project. So our PM's job is really making sure that she's able to remove blockers and she's able to keep the team moving. A couple of different tasks that our team, mem team members might be doing uh, might involve content strategy, auditing all the content to see what we got, uh, working on taxonomy or user mappings. Uh, we might start working through Google Analytics uh, to see different data that are on the site and how, they're, how users are interacting with the site as it is right now. Uh, we might start working through usability testing and different surveys of the audience. And if, if clients have past research, definitely want to be able to dig into that. 
Our development team might also start working on some foundational development work, making sure that we're able to start a project when we're able to have the specs. Um, and also starting to figure out what different fields and different definitions might be a part of the project. Our PM during this, and you're going to hear this a few times as we move into other phases, but our PM's job is making sure that uh, she's able to help the team gather the data they need. Um, also making sure that uh, she's able to help analyze that feedback from the client. Uh, making sure that there's uh, unblocked problems, really keeping things moving along. For this project, we're working on a higher ed client. Uh, we know that there's going to be a couple of key performance indicators, or the main things, the main jobs of this website. Um, for a higher ed client, often these tend to be how do we make it uh, a pathway to applying online, signing up for campus tours, filling out financial aid forms. Um, it's important to know all these things at the beginning of a project, exactly the jobs we want the site to do. Allison knows a lot about higher ed space, so she's in a good spot to measure, measure the project. 525,600 <laughs> minutes, 525,000 users each night, 525,600 minutes, how do you measure your KPIs? In bounces, in sessions, in page views, in traffic entry, in exits, in brand or type of device, 525,600 minutes, how do you measure your KPIs? Portions of time. <laughs> Portions of time. Portions of time. <laughs> measure your time. Once we have a clear idea of what the site is going to be doing and how we're going to measure it, we like to move into our, our design phase where the team really works to make sure that we've got a visual interface that works in tandem with the strategy that we've identified. We have a couple of key phases or parts that we, we are generally going to be taking in the project uh, when we hit the design phase. Uh, we generally start with style tiles. Uh, these are not layouts. Think of them as those mood boards you see on HGTV where you know, you've got a nice different colors and different patterns and textures. We do the similar thing with the website, where we try to show what types of fonts, what types of wording, photography we might have. Get an idea of the feel of the site that we want. Uh, when we start working through design concepts, we'll start with some wireframes. Uh, these are our uh, layouts, uh, where you show hierarchy. Generally, these won't have font treatments or photos in them, but are really meant to go, is this bit of information more important than this bit of information? We jam those two together, and they become our design tops. This is the first time our our clients are going to see in probably a Photoshop or Illustrator form uh, what a couple of key pages, their home page or, or something else, might look like. We move directly into prototyping from there, where we try to spend as much of our time in design as possible, where we, we provide a living style guide where clients are able to, to see what it's going to look like on mobile and tablet forms, as well as desktop, of course, and see how those all come together. Our PM, like we talked about before, is, is still uh, making sure that we're scheduling the appropriate meetings. We're really unblocking everybody uh, to make sure that, that there's no log jams in the system. We're also making sure to document all of the decisions um, and making sure that things keep moving. So as the process starts to come to an end, uh, Allison scheduled meetings with the clients and stakeholders to present work, and everyone's going to be super, super excited. But unfortunately, as with all grand rock operas, we're bound to run into an evil, evil villain. And our first one, is going to be disapproval from our stakeholders. <laughs> so just when things seem like they're going to be smooth sailing, one important stakeholder might give a problem. And our part of our PM's job is to help inform the internal and external teams exactly how we made the decisions that we did to get where we are and figure out how we're going to keep moving forward. Our crafty and diplomatic project manager has to navigate some tri tricky waters. So really, how is she going to placate mm -hmm. all those voices in the room? Our client seems to have some fears that our direction isn't clear. Perhaps their needs aren't being fully met. This is the time to keep in mind their ass is on the line. They need to know we've got their back and so pointing to all the research helps the stakeholder to calm down. Calm down. Having open conversations helps that stakeholder calm down. It's the most efficient way. <laughs> that 
one's my favorite. <laughs> Once we've gotten over that hurdle, the design phase is complete, the client is happy, and we're time for that, that break in the middle. What did we call it? Oh, that's right, an intermission. <laughs> How do you think it's going? It's going okay. I don't know where about the people in the back. Where about the people in the back? Yeah. I'll say mine. How's Hank? He's doing well. Yeah. <laughs> Before we got here, I was watching him a doggy get here on his doggy cam. Oh, I'll show you later. Yeah, I'd love to see him. That'd be awesome. We probably should get started again. The client's not back yet. They're not back yet? Okay. <laughs> hey, they're back. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right, last time on Project Management the Musical, we started by understanding the contract of our project. We moved directly into a kickoff and on-site meeting where we really tried to gain consensus and really get to know our client. Moved into a strategy and discovery phase uh, where we learned to measure, measure the site. And then uh, we moved into a design phase where we might have needed a little bit of sugar to help the, the, the project go down, but uh, we were able to get through that with our crafty and diplomatic project manager. So now we're ready to move into the next phase of our project, which is the development phase where we're gonna build the dang thing. Allison is now starting to work with our team to make sure that we're clearly organized to, to start setting up all the development processes and to make sure that we're able to start moving forward. And this is really where our lead engineer and the development team really get to strut their stuff. At Palantir, we like to work in, in an agile process where we set up two-week sprints. Uh, we determine about how much work we can get done in that amount of time, work with the client to prioritize that work, work through a two-week sprint where at the end of that, we've got a demo and then we're able to work with the client to get immediate feedback. And what we find is this really <coughs> helps to make sure that we're, we're not too far off track, we're not building anything they don't need, or we're not showing something that's, that's wackadoo, to use a bad word. Um, and then making sure that we're able to fix if there's any issues. I always like to tell people you're only a sprint away from getting anything that, that, that needs to be fixed. So uh, working in an agile framework really helps with that. During this time, our team's gonna be working on a couple of different things. Um, our team's going to be assigning points or levels of effort to different tickets. Um, you might say this one's going to take me about a half a day or a full day. I've worked on teams before that did this in t-shirt sizes where you're like, this is extra small or this is a 3XLT. Um, so it really depends on how you're able to figure out how much you're able to take on and really let your client know that in this period of time we think we're able to work on this much. Our team's going to be helping our client assess uh, you know, what can be done, what's the best priority order for things. Uh, so we're not, uh, we're not confusing Drupal, or we're not uh, putting a cart before a horse. And we're really helping, like I said, to make sure that those dependencies are set. But our team's really gonna be spending a lot of time creating the site. They're gonna be building, they're gonna be doing testing, and deploying. Throughout this time, our PM's gonna be responsible for managing a, a pretty regular schedule, where each day we're gonna be meeting for about 15 minutes in a meeting called a scrum, where each person's <laughs> gonna be talking about what they're working on today, what they're working on tomorrow and surfacing if there's any blockers. And that really helps to make sure that nobody spins for too long without being able to get help, or that nobody's running into any problems. Um, at the beginning of each, or excuse me, at the end of each one, we're gonna be doing a demo and a retro, and then we also meet as a team where we go, all right, what are the things that we wanna take on? Do we have tickets that, that really make sense? Do we have tickets that are actionable? Um, and making sure that we're able to go, go, go forward. You know, Joe, this job could be systematic. Yeah. <laughs> Automatic. Yeah. Never bureaucratic. Yeah. And we're sprinting. We're sprinting. User stories are being finished one by one. We're sprinting, yes. We're sprinting. <laughs> completed until all the work gets done. We're sprinting, yes. We're sprinting. The project team uh -huh. keeps going clean. Uh -huh. during this time, while we're singing and doing whatever that is, uh, we'll be helping to set acceptance criteria. How do we know that, that this particular ticket is done? Um, you want to make sure that that's documented early, so that way you have an appropriate level of effort on it. And when you're having conversations with the QA team, you're having conversations with anybody, you know what you're aiming for. We'll begin with the end in, in mind. Uh, you, the client's going to be prioritizing value. Sometimes it might be more important to have a certain type of page completed before another one. 
And that's not something that's as easy for us on the, on the agency side to be doing. Um, it's really something we want to make sure we're helping the client be able to provide what value there is. Many times our clients will be doing internal demos. Uh, we'll, we'll do one as a team and we might do a couple of follow-ups, but there might be dozens and dozens of stakeholders <coughs> and our, our client team might be really helping out with a lot of that. And in the best projects we find that we have our clients working in our daily meetings. Um, the more that they're interacting and they see what's going on in a project, the better that we're all able to work together to make sure that things come together. But, again, we're going to run to another villain in this brand walk uh, This time it's going to be scope creep. This is what's going to happen when our clients try to pack just a little bit too much into a project. Um, and our PM and our lead developers really need to be on their toes to make sure to watch for this. Uh, they might need to go back to some of that documentation from the very beginning where we laid out a lot of things that were in and out. Um, so how does Allison really work through this? Uh, sometimes she might refer to the SOW. Uh, she might go back to some of the documentation that we had on the original strategy um, and really help to guide why something was not included or why something was done in a slightly different way. But sometimes, unfortunately, there's always that time when you just have to sometimes say, I don't know, let it go? Yeah. Out of scope, out of scope, you <laughs> can't let this creep anymore. Out of scope, out of scope, lack of funds you can't ignore. I don't care what my thoughts will say. Let them all rage on. That code always bothers me anyway. <laughs> At this point, we've been on the project for a decent amount of time, right? That contract in the very beginning was weeks, maybe months, sometimes years earlier. Um, so the team's got to keep moving, and Allison, as a project manager in this, has to be that cheerleader, that person that's helping drive everybody moving forward, helping everything continue going on, making sure that we're still communicating well, we're still documenting what we need to have, and that we're not putting up blockers, and that she's able to help knock those down and make sure the project keeps going forward. But alas, it's bound to happen, especially just before you're about ready to launch something. It's definitely going to happen. One of our engineers is bound to get sick. It's going to be heartbreak. And Allison's going to have to manage the project with fewer points and just as many expectations. Oh, Kenny, you've caught influenza. Oh, Kenny, <laughs> and suddenly this sprint will never be the same to me. recovers. We're finally ready for that whole best part of this whole thing. And that's launch. Launch. <laughs> so thankfully, after we battle all that scope creep, we've gone through so many different phases since the very beginning of this thing. And we're able to talk about this loud, proud, and high above the pride. And can you feel the love? This isn't the end. <laughs> Project manager still has one very, very important thing that she needs to take care of. And that's making sure that we have a team retrospective. 
you want to make sure that as we're moving through each project, as we're doing each increment on a project, that we're regularly talking about ways that we can improve. Um, there's three basic questions that are great for a retro. And this can be as a part of each individual sprint and definitely a must-do uh, piece at the end of a project. Uh, you want to ask what went well. What are the things that in this project we're super proud of? The things that we really, we really think went well, whether that's communication, whether that was the design process, strategy process, Allison singing, whatever it happens to be, we want to make sure that we document what went well. We also want to talk about what could be improved. My singing, my dancing. But we also want to make sure that we're able to talk about the things that you know, didn't go quite as well in the project, so we are able to, to fix those next time around. Um, and then also one of my favorites is, what can we do to inform the next project? Uh, what are learnings that we had? And this might be a really cool technical implementation. It might have been a really awesome project management thing that we did that we totally want to do again. Uh, but making sure that we document all of those things. As we have this meeting, Allison's job in that is really making sure that she's jogging everyone's memories of what just happened. <laughs> 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 Memory, all alone in my office. I was <laughs> the old days when we worked as a team. I remember that time our Google crept out. <laughs> ah, those memories. Such a dream. So if you've done your job right, and you, you've had everything come in right, there's a good chance you might be able to have your, your, your client come back, or have your teammates come back, which is a really, really great thing to be able to do. Managing your inside sales pipeline is easier than managing uh, going out and getting new clients continually. It's also kind of a sense of pride when you're able to have somebody who loved working with you so much that they keep wanting to work with you. Uh, so the more that you're able to, to stay in touch, uh, the more that you're able to uh, work uh, into support where you're able to do small updates if somebody doesn't need something large, the better off it's really going to be for your project. Uh, but you really do have to keep in touch with your client. It's never really goodbye. So we started with hello, so we're going to end with Hello, <laughs> it's me. I was wondering if after all this time you'd like to meet to hire us again. <laughs> it seems you have a Drupal 6 site and now it's not supported. <laughs> hello from the other side. Don't want to call a thousand times to tell you I'm here to build another website. So give me your budget and we'll make it right once more. Hey, Baltimore. That's the end. Thanks for coming. <laughs>
<laughs> this is our finale, I believe. This is our finale. So, as far as I know, yeah. <laughs> but there, we're on the internet as everything is. So. <laughs> so one of the big project challenges that I've run into at a bunch of different organizations it doesn't come from the client side, rather it comes from the your the rest of your organization. Um, and that developers are scarce resources, and very often somebody gets pulled off on another project or resources on a very hard to find. So give me advice for the uh, for the shops out here for how to control their resources so that they don't mess up their own projects. That's a that's a sticky point. Uh, resourcing is never fun, um, but I mean the less disruptive you are to a project and the less onboarding you need to do, the better off for your client. Um, what I what I like to do is you know if I am going to lose resources lose resourcing on a project or lose people. Um, the best thing you can do is just be as open and transparent as you can. Like, hey, we're losing Allison on this project for a couple of days. Um, our, we, our expected output for this next sprint is gonna reduce by this amount. Um, you know, we can look at other ways to augment staffing, maybe at a later sprint, or we can extend the timeline depending on, again, that, that project management triangle, of time, scope, budget, whichever one's adjustable. Um, often, if, if somebody gets pulled off, it's hard to be able to pull anybody on, so it really just kind of becomes one of those conversations that you have to have in your project of do we do we reduce our scope, do we elongate our timeline, or do we look to bring other resources in? So it's never a fun set of questions, or never a fun topic, but that's the best way you can do it, I found. You uh, want to do the encore? Go for I, it. I, I have a bonus song since it's DrupalCon, just in case. <clears throat> so, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to open with it, but we got scared to change it up. Yeah, yeah we, 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 this was going to be our opening. All right. Oh, 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 look at this room. Here to uh -huh. consume some skills today. Oh, 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 I've got my props and my partner, Joe. I'm ready to go. Our hashtags are sweet and helpful when you tweet to tell DrupalCon that our session rocks. And oh, 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 visit our booth so you can get some cool Palantir socks. Good morning, Baltimore. That developer there by the door. And that strategist dressed in green is here to learn how I run my team with project management, with some music and visual fun. We're going to teach you with glee. Joe Allen Black. And me. <laughs> Thank you very much.